This is USC quarterback Caleb Williams. He's the best prospect I've seen in the last five years. I think he's better than Trevor Lawrence. And one stat to just kind of back that up. Among the Power 5 quarterbacks to hit these three benchmarks, 105 total EPA, 80 passing EPA, and 15 rushing EPA, well-rounded skill set. It's Mariota, Mahomes, Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Drake May, Caleb Williams. I mean, these are some of the best quarterbacks in the modern NFL. What I see with Caleb Williams, obviously, it's all this creative stuff, both as a passer and as a rusher. But I think that his just in-pocket play has gone way, way overlooked. I think he's going to be one of the better passers right in the pocket in the NFL basically immediately. Just real quick, that list has a lot of carryover from Lincoln Riley and a lot of the same players in that same offense. So just that is on my radar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure this video is going to go for 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to break down every single aspect of Caleb Williams game. Easy answer. He's special. I mean, Caleb Williams is so special and it's what you talked about. When I watch him, I really think you're seeing the personification of like the, the Rogers effect, the Patrick Mahomes effect in a way with a bunch of these younger quarterbacks that are coming through. I'm sure we'll see a couple more in the next few years as well. Just this dynamic that he plays with and the balance that he plays with within the timing of the offense, as you said, within the rhythm of the offense. But then, you know, the, on any given play, seven things can go wrong. And when something does go into the trash, he has the skills to overcome that failure mm -hmm. because of his athleticism, because of his dynamic arm, because that he can throw from an unbalanced base. And let's dive into almost every single one of those aspects because he puts so much, I think, magic and uniqueness on mm -hmm. tape that it is just going to be appointment viewing every single Monday of this style of quarterback once he reaches the NFL. Completely agree. And before we get to the the magic, I just want to talk about what happens when things aren't complete chaos, Love which it. they were a lot at USC. By the way, they threw the most screens in the Power Five last year, 137 of them. Those had a 34% success rate, six yards per attempt. So if you're wondering why Caleb's stats looked a little bit wonky last year, you can look at the screens that were going nowhere. You can look at his offensive line, which I thought was terrible. And then I don't think that Taj Washington and Brendan Rice are very good as wide receivers. But this is still what's so crazy about Caleb Williams. On the classic timing routes, I'm talking about slants, comebacks, curls, digs, out routes from inside the pocket. He had a 0.54 EPA. That is awesome stuff from him. He had a higher points earned uh, back in that true sophomore season when he went completely nuts and won the Heisman, removing the RPOs, removing the screens. Then CJ Stroud did, who I thought was fantastic throwing to the best wide receivers inside the pocket. He had a 92nd percentile passing EPA as a true sophomore. Things got a little bit wonkier this last season, but his feel, he can play on rhythm. He's very totally. accurate when his feet are set and he's not trying to make a play out of things. I think that you see him go from one to two. I thought his pocket movement going just from left to right, just a little bit, not, not talking about scrambling outside the pocket, just finding that one little arm angle, throwing it from a different type of direction here. I thought just beyond the creative stuff, I think that he was a very developed quarterback uh, just from inside the pocket. Going back to the names that I mentioned, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, when you watch highlights or a compilation video of them, you're going to see these incredible outside of structure plays and downfield throws into tiny little buckets uh, that many other quarterbacks can't make. But then when you actually watch the entire full games, you get the sense, you get the entire picture that Oh, a lot of the throws that they're making are within 2.5, 2.7 seconds because they are diagnosing pre-snap and then they're diagnosing post-snap and the ball is out of their hands immediately. I am 100% with you that despite maybe the public perception that this is an out of structure style of quarterback who wants to play backyard football to me, yes, he has that, but that is almost anything but the truth mm -hmm. when he actually has a clean pocket. In fact, his feet almost go silent in those situations like they are planted to the ground mm -hmm. he's very comfortable to take what is there and in those moments he's very rhythmically sound the timing is absolutely correct and exactly what the coach wants in those situations so it's mm -hmm. not happy feet it's not everything getting out of sync and boom i have to make something outside of structure and i think again going back to rogers and mahomes it overlooks just how standard of quarterbacking they can be and how important that is mm -hmm. to winning NFL games. And because Caleb Williams has the specialness on his tape too, I almost think that the standard quarterback stuff yes. gets overlooked at the exact same time. Yep.
And I think that we'll see that play out when he has actually a better surrounding uh, cast than what he had at USC. He was constantly under pressure. And he kind of gets labeled as this guy that doesn't take care of the football. And obviously, there's some really bad fumbles oh, yeah, inside the are. pocket. There are he, some really bad stuff. He carries the ball like Michael Vick a little bit too much. And you can't be doing that inside the pocket. <laughs> Assuming that gets fixed a little bit. <laughs> let's talk about his interception rate. 1%. You know who yeah. that reminds me of? You keep naming them. Aaron Rodgers. The guy yeah. throws the ball down the field all the time, plays within the structure and out of structure, never throws interception. He didn't do that at all. He had three of them in the Notre Dame game. Some of them it was a, a, a miss, miss blitz. There was a safety coming out of nowhere. There were some untimely throws where he's trying to make a play. Sure. But 1% interception ratio for how much he was asked to do at USC is absurd. And the other thing we're talking about, he's a true junior. He was a true sophomore when he completely broke out, even as a true freshman when he came in for Spencer Rattler. There's the a lot of good stuff at field, Oklahoma. Oh my gosh, some of the throws yeah. downfield uh, back in the Oklahoma days. It was so evident. Though I love what you said about his base and his feet. He does play super light on his feet at times, and there's other times where he has to be really strong. Yes. And this dude will absolutely lower his shoulder for a first down there's some sacks where a, an arm sack would knock down a lighter quarterback but because he is so dense he is actually able to escape some of these pressures just because he's a strong athlete and i actually think that violent movement goes into his pocket movement as well at times when there's edge presence around him he will violently stick his back foot in the ground digs it in there yeah. and climbs the pocket and resets takes a moment and it's not a second, it's like 0.1, a 10th of mm -hmm. a second, and then delivers like a perfectly balanced pass yeah. once again. And again, that, that just driving movement forward that is just consistent with him. It really is. To talk about his situation, man, you know it much more than I do because you watch the USC Trojans on a weekly basis. Every single prospect that was in the even 2023 NFL draft had their best game against USC. You can talk about Don Kincaid. You can talk about Tajay Spears. And like, I even look back to just one occasion, Washington this season, right? Oh, the Huskies had just two drives that didn't end in points in the entire game. In fact, eight of 10 drives ended in a touchdown. I hear a criticism of Caleb Williams that, oh, he just does too much at times. Right. That's totally fair. He also had to do too much, right? Mm -hmm. He had to have every single drive end in a touchdown. And because that is very difficult to do with the defense that he has across from him, with the offensive talent and specifically offensive line that was in front of him, it can lead to not even razor thin margins, but just a lot of negative outcomes because yeah. he's pushing the limit. He's going to go into a better situation in the NFL. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And they would spread out the offense of so one offensive lineman made a mistake. There was not a tight end or a running back in there to kind of chip chip in and get, give him some some extra time there. And I think people, when they talk about this, he plays too dangerously. I think they look at his like time to throw, for example, or his sack rate and stuff. And there's also like an element of the reason why his time to throw is so insane is because he's such a dynamic athlete inside the pocket and he's not taking off and scrambling immediately. He has his great balance. I think this is maybe his his best trait is when to actually take off for a first down versus when to kind of hold in the pocket, take that hit because he's got that big, strong base. By that little extra ball. moment, basically, almost drift yes. a little bit. It's not full speed yes. movements. It's drifting. And again, Patrick Mahomes does that better than anyone else yeah. in the NFL. And he can throw it on those left and throw it on his right just to put some like numbers behind what he is as like an athlete. 93rd percentile rushing EPA going back to this true sophomore season. That's insane for also being in the 90th percentile as a passer. He on on these scrambles in broken plays averaged 0.48 EPA, which is out of this world good. On top of that, there's this one time where there was a fumble where he dropped the snap. And then he had to pick up the ball and then threw a 76 yard passing touchdown. So there were some times where they were throwing ground balls to him out of shotgun. So yeah, for him to turn into Mahomes, now that's obviously the comp that we're trying to dream of with somebody like Caleb Williams. Mahomes has learned to take the easy stuff consistently for games, for months of the season, for the entire regular season until it comes down totally. to the playoffs. Caleb's going to have to learn how to do that. We'll see if he can do that. I think that Caleb is watching enough Mahomes where he's going to try to figure that out. For now, I think he's a bigger version of Kyler Murray, which is a great foundation because Kyler is a, a borderline top 10 quarterback. And I think that Caleb Williams showed more uh, inside the pocket than what Kyler Murray did, both in the same exact offense. So if he can take a couple more easy, the, easy completions, which I think goes back to the defense and the surrounding parts where he's trying to make a big play out of something. Offensive structure with Cliff Kingsbury, right. not so great this year. Oh, I mean, 
you're killing me with this stuff, but it's so true. <laughs> if he does that, I think we're looking at a, a player that can be a pro bowler right away. I think that yeah. this guy is a special player, man. He really is a special prospect. Right. Comparing to Burrow and Lawrence and Stroud and those guys, he just offers that next tier that those guys, as great as prospects as they were, they just don't have access to this type of tier. So in a in this NFL where you're trying to beat Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, I think Caleb Williams is one of those guys that actually has the traits to go compete with those guys. You talked about his rushing ability. Again, even going back to those Oklahoma highlights, it's nuts stuff. Against Texas, he broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage on a quarterback power, ran at 60 yards. A couple of plays later, he climbed the pocket 55 yards in the air off one foot to the front right pylon. That was nuts. what, as a true freshman who wasn't even like yeah. the starter. Then over to USC, there was this hilarious snap. And I'm going to try to find the clip for producer Weaves against UCLA. It was a three man rush on, I think, third and three. And Every single one of the pass rushers, again, just three, ended up beating their offensive linemen. So he had to overcome three one-on-one -on -one situations to buy himself little moments and little bits of time. He avoided every single one of them, moved to his left, off-platform throw, yeah. first down. So again, it was a three-man rush that you're expecting to, oh, I'm going to have to find a really difficult area and tight window to throw. Instead, mm -hmm. he had to turn into three avoided sacks and then on the move, elongate the play to the point, because this kind of brings back to the time to throw stuff. He is an outlier in, in that regard. Oh, yeah. Here's this chart career production while under pressure. Uh, his average time to throw is above 4.5 seconds. We <laughs> legit have never seen a quarterback since right. 2014 in those numbers. And I th just going back and this is just me. I did see him at times turn down some difficult early throws mm -hmm. in the hopes of extending plays and that buying time for his lesser talent wide receivers to create space on broken or elongated plays. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was, oh, I'm going to put the pressure on myself because the play call sucked or these guys couldn't win early because I know I can elongate these plays somewhat safely rather than, hey, this is a 60 40 ball in the favor of the defense it gives me a better situation if i hold on to this pass for four and a half seconds and then maybe something happens yep that's what makes mahomes just the absolute sensation that he is and he's basically inevitable because he can do both he can do the out of structure stuff and he also takes those completions so we'll see if if caleb williams is able to do that i think that's going to be the difference of him being a pro bowl type of guy versus somebody that could potentially be an all pro, but a uh, great situation for Caleb Williams to go into, obviously with the two wide receivers that they have, the ninth overall pick as well with the Chicago Bears, a decent uh, defense. So hopefully we, they can get the offensive line and play caller. I'm expecting him to go out there immediately and immediately ball out. I think yeah. he's that type of guy. And this, the among first overall pick supporting cast, this is not the Carolina Panthers that he's walking into. He can do the true quarterback traditional stuff. And then he can also, the next snap, be just a team carrier. Mm -hmm. That is like the best description of what it is to be a mm -hmm. top 10 to top five quarterback yeah. in the NFL right now. Uh, I will say he does have to get rid of like really lose with the football, carrying it like, like one hand and yeah. stuff. Uh, but, you know, the guy, the guy's having fun. Um, you've been doing this for, for a while now. Where would you put the Caleb Williams pre-draft profile against just like all time grades? Just behind Andrew Luck. Luck. Yeah. Yeah. Seems and appropriate. I don't watch a lot of college football on Saturdays. And so, because I don't want to honestly live in the roller coaster of people's draft emotions and sure. prospect evaluations during the season because they can fluctuate, it seems like, on Twitter. So just going back to it, I, again, I, I was amazed at how he played the game simple at times when it was able to be given yeah. to him and then just the elongatedness out there. He's not like the biggest dude, you know, he's yeah. like just over six feet tall and 200 and something pounds. But man, he just has the game that you don't see many people playing in the comfort that he does in uncomfortable situations. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, that is special. You, you, you just do not see a prospect like this come around the corner every single yep. draft class. Don't mess it up, Bears. Not this time. <laughs> And, and USC, I'll send you some more NIL money so you guys can, you know, <laughs> get some better players. Uh, he really is one of those players that you and I are going to wake up and watch every single Monday morning. And that's like right. the highest compliment that we can give on replay. All right. That does it. Go and check out the rest of the content that we have on the channel. If you like this one, guess what? 
we have a prospect video for every single quarterback, basically every single wide receiver prospect that you could care about and even running backs on the way. So hit that subscribe button. The more of you that do that, the more cool stuff we get to do. Thumbs up and we will talk to you on the next one. <laughs>